You've been patient and now here we are. Welcome to another edition of Shift Says. Over the past couple of episodes, we've been working through some of the foundational concepts relating to the development of your fit for duty system. On our last episode, we broke down the concept of safety sensitive and why it's important. So obviously the next question in that conversation is, how do I go about classifying my positions and tasks as safety sensitive and non-safety sensitive in a way that is purposeful, objective, and defendable? Now, if you missed our last episode, we discussed the importance of the distinction between safety sensitive and non-safety sensitive positions in terms of the application of your fit for duty system. While all employees and contractors will be subject to your fit for duty system, their roles and responsibilities, investigative processes, and outcomes will differ depending on whether they're classified as safety sensitive or not. The first things to consider as you classify your positions and tasks are the potential detrimental impact of a worker in a specific position or completing specific tasks on people, so workers and the public, the environment, the organization's assets, and the organization's reputation. You can think of the acronym PAIR to help you remember these important considerations. P is for people, E is for environment, A is for assets, and R is for reputation. The next things to consider are the tasks being performed within the position and the work environment in which they're being completed. Now we came across a tool called a safety sensitive decision matrix that we've shared with some of our companies and many organizations have found very useful in the classification of safety sensitive positions. This is not a tool that was developed or created by Shift OHS, but one that one of our employees brought forward that we have really liked and found useful. Using this tool starts with the documentation of the tasks typically performed by the position and the environment in which the position operates. No need to reinvent the wheel. You can likely pull these job tasks from a job description or a job demands analysis if you already have these in place. Next, we determine the severity of the work activities, paying special attention to the highest consequence activity which is likely to be undertaken by a worker in that role. It's important to consider the highest consequence work, even if they only perform it on an infrequent basis. The severity of the tasks is graded with level one being a position with work tasks with low risk, low consequences of an incident and low risk exposure to hazards, and level five being a position with work tasks with extensive risk, extensive consequences of an incident and high exposure to hazards. Of course, as we grade the position's tasks, it's important to remember the pair considerations. What type of impact can or will these positions, tasks, or activities have on people, the environment, your assets, and your reputation? Next, we will follow the same path to determine the severity level of the work environment in which this position operates. Again, it's important to consider the highest risk and the highest exposure related to the environment in which the work is being performed. Just like with the work activities, it is important to consider the highest consequence of work environment or location where the worker will perform work, even on an infrequent basis. It's also important to think about the pair. Level one is the least severe environment with slight risk and hazard exposure where work activities are being performed. Level five is the most severe with extensive risk and hazard exposure. Once the work activity and work environment severity levels have been determined, we can easily plot them on the graph, thus obtaining an objective and data-driven determination of the safety-sensitive or non-safety-sensitive nature of that position. This tool is meant to provide an objective evaluation of your different positions, thus aiding in the effective application of your fit for duty system. It can also be used to help make decisions regarding modified work and return to work conditions. Again, this is not a tool that was created or developed by Shift OHS, but it is one that we found very useful. If you have questions about classifying your positions, reach out to Shift OHS today at 403-343-6869. As always, thank you for your time and stay tuned for more answers to commonly asked questions.